So we're going to start with looking at split stitch, which is another nice one to use for either your lettering for the months of the year or the stems as well. So just to show you on this piece here, we've got this, this stem here is a split stitch. This is the stem stitch that we did a few weeks ago. This one here and this one here are the chain stitch that we did last week and then the chain filling stitch as well, where you work rows and rows of chain stitch together and then that one finishes on on um, the stem stitch so we'll have a go with this split stitch so I've threaded up I'm going to just show it in the six ends of embroidery floss so you if you're practicing you could either just draw a straight line or a slight waved line sort of mimic a, a stem on a flower so the first thing that we're going to do is come up from the back and do a stitch forward, just a straight stitch forward. Again, about half a centimetre long. And then, this is just the slightly tricky bit, you're gonna come back about two, from the back of the, the fabric, about two thirds of the way, of the length of the stitch. So ideally, you wanna sort of split your threads evenly if you've got sort of, um six or four so that there's two or three either side and then we go back and then do another stitch forward and we go back and split those stitches don't worry too much about you, you can sort of do it by eye sort of splitting it evenly so it does almost look a little bit like chain stitch. You obviously don't get the sort of gap showing as much with, with the split stitch. Like that. I did notice last week on some of the examples of um, the work that you've been adding that um, we talked in the first week about, you just see it here on the edge of this sample here, the whipped back stitch, um, which again can be nice to do a contrast color or all the same color to give that really nice sort of corded stem look. Um, but I think I saw on some of the examples that some of you had tried whipping a chain stitch as well um, and the stem stitch. So you can also add to your so these straight stitches, um, this idea of whipping them as well if you wanted to. So that's your stem stitch there. So I've gone, just to recap, stitch forward, and then I'm just going back. And you can see there, I'm just trying to split the stitch this way there. And then when you get to the end, you can just tie that off and finish it sometimes nice if you want it to look the same on your last stitch come that third of the way back and just take it in on that last stitch rather than doing a stitch forward and then tie that off so that's one way of doing the stem stitch there and um, there is another way of doing the stem stitch as well this is the most common that you'll see in sort of the reference books but there is um, an alternative way which I can show you in a moment I may have just been saying I was um, talking about stem but it's actually split stitch this is what we're doing today so this is split stitch so I can show you the other way of how to do stem stitch um, split stitch now now so I'm just going to show you the alternative split stitch. So that's the most common way with your split stitch. This one here where you'll see there's just small little stitches behind. This way will look more like a back stitch from behind. So with this one, you start it in the same way. We go forward. You might want to go less than the, the half a centimeter stitch. If you just go a bit shorter and then rather than come up here, here to split the stitch. If you do a stitch length forward, like I said, shorter than that half a centimetre, 
this time. So I'll come up and as with the back stitch, you normally go into that hole. What we're doing is we're going back to split that first stitch. So this way of doing the split stitch, you're actually splitting it from the top of your work. So some people find that easier to see to go in directly above. Whereas the way I just demonstrated, you're coming up from the back to try and split it. So both, both are fine ways to, to do it. So I'll go back here and I've split that stitch. Then I come forward again as if I am going to do a back stitch and I'm going back and splitting that last stitch. So perhaps have a go at trying both ways and then let me know which is your favourite way to do it. So we'll have a go at long and short stitch now. Um, I was saying if you, if you haven't tried it before I would just try in a sort of square shape so you're not sort of reducing sort of squashing any stitches down to start with um, but more than likely with the vintage florals you'll be doing it in sort of a petal or a leaf shape so I'm going to just do that on this leaf here one way to start is to, to start but to start with um, doing the staggered first row if you start in the sort of the middle, it can be a little bit easier um, and work either side of it just to, for your first row. So I've done a long stitch there in the center and then I'm doing a short stitch and a long stitch. A short stitch. And because this is for a petal, Mine is sort of slightly angling into the, the middle there. So I've done long, short, long, short, long, short. And now I'll just do the other side of that one I started with. You can just fill in in all the same colour if you want to. You don't need to to change your colours if you don't want to. Um, like I said, it's it's a filling stitch like the satin stitches, but it adds more texture than just the smooth satin stitch. I'll just add one more, one more. So I'm doing this with six ends, but what I find does look neater and softer is if you use perhaps just two or three ends of your thread, maybe have a play around with it. So now what I'm doing is the next row, I'm filling in these gaps that I've created here. So if I come up here to my next row and I'm going in to the last short stitch there. And then again, gap here. What I've been told is a little tip as well in the past. It's not too bad for this that's sort of the six ends here that it's filling in all that shape there. If you find that you go to fill in one of the gaps and it still looks like there's a bit of space, you can always do a second stitch to just fill in that gap if you're finding it's looking a bit sparse just to make sure it's nice and filled in. Now I'm going to be going between these gaps so I can just work from this way to the next. It is one I think that you need to just keep doing and doing again this long and short stitch. Again, it could be a nice way to fill in some of your leaves instead of a satin stitch or the chain filling stitch. Uh, can you please just remind this the color for February? 
I'll just carry on there between the gaps. What you'll sometimes find, you can see there, my thread's almost twisting around. If, you, if you're getting your, a bit of a twist on your thread as you're sewing, if you just hold up your hoop, a bit hard to see there, hold it up and you just see that the needle unravels. So it's then easier to, to start sewing again. So you just carry on like that till the end and then you'll find that your last stitches on the last row will also then be offset as a long and a short. It's going to be a bit different here with the petal because I'm reducing the stitches down. You'll probably just end up with a few stitches towards the end, but I can carry on with that in a moment. Okay. 